Welcome to Fast Pace, the new growth leadership and management podcast featuring Josh Vegan and Dean Mackey. We wanted to peel back the layers on what happens in the world of fast-paced real estate agencies, from new leadership models to the management challenges we all face each day. This is about a new era in the estate agency sector. Rapid changes to business models, service lines, remuneration, and growth present the greatest opportunities that we've ever seen. Sit back, get inspired, grow your skills, and reimagine what's possible with Fast Pace. Every Friday, wherever you get your podcasts, on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Josh Vegan Digital. Stakeholders versus shareholders. Who are they and what do they matter? Inside of any business, you're going to find there are a group of people that are stakeholders. Who are these people? Why do they actually cause issues and challenges on the inside of your business? Then in addition to that, who are shareholders and how do they relate to what actually happens inside of a business? Dean, we've seen lots of this. Um, what is a stakeholder and what is a shareholder and what's the difference between both? Yeah, interesting conversation. Uh, sometimes they, they can be the same person, interestingly. Um, you know, so so if we sort of just oh, we start with talking about a stakeholder, a stakeholder is really anyone who is affected by sort of you know your business really um the policies the, the you know the decisions you make you know your business operations so th- these could be um internal or external they can be an employee mm-hmm. um they could be a supplier they could be a customer um they could be a community so so there are stakeholders in your business in different ways in different levels and so Mm-hmm. And they can also be a shareholder, of course. So, mm-hmm. um, so you know, stakeholders, of course, you know, these 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 people have a, a significant impact upon you know the reputation and performance of your business, really. Um, so, you know, if if for the long term success of your business, if your customers, you know, a stakeholder, and you're not giving them what they need, then you'll probably lose them as a customer, right? Mm. Same with the employees. If you if if your team are not connected and aligned to what you're doing, um, and they're being ill affected by that, then of course they they could drag things down. The converse is true, of course. If they're aligned and connected and everything else, then they could have a significant uh, impact upon, you know, how, how you're performing, um, you know, your brand recognition, people's willingness to want to stay in a business, get attracted to a business. All those things are really important to stakeholders and can affect the long-term success. Um, if you take a shareholder, a shareholder, um, I look at shareholders on a couple of levels, I guess, because there are shareholders uh, who really provide capital um, into a business to help fund it, and they own a piece of equity in that business as a consequence of, the, of that, and they receive profit and distributions, and obviously enterprise value over time. Mm-hmm. And that would be a traditional sort of way of looking at it, really. Um, mm-hmm. But I, I sort of think of shareholders as, as a bit more than that. I think of shareholders uh, in our businesses, certainly what I just said, mm. but equally they're people who want to contribute and drive and help the business move forward. Now, just because you're a shareholder doesn't mean necessarily you're, you're, you're a, a manager, decision maker or whatever, but you're definitely a leader, mm-hmm. right? So, a, a, so, you know, you might contribute to the business decisions, i.e. on a quarterly basis or on a business planning basis, but then you sort of get out of the way in our business anyway and, and let the, the, the leadership group um, that's responsible and assign the task of delivering against that to go and do that and often a shareholder would be a high performing agent or whatever mm-hmm. and their job is really in my business to go out and lead by example to 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 lead the behaviors the values and the things that we expect them to to, to display um, as well as actually perform at a, at a level in their swim lane mm-hmm. and so so for us it's it's an investment um, but it's also an active investment in in demonstrating what we'd like to see so you know sh- shareholders could actually be quite negatively impactful on the business if just they put their money and they behave badly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so, so I sort of look at it and go, there are, because they're a stakeholder, it's, it's really even more important as a shareholder once they've invested and, and, and the business has said, yep, you're, you know, we're going to allow you to move through that gate and become an, investment, an investor in the organisation and a shareholder in the upside, that the rest of the business, those stakeholders are in the business, can actually see the right behaviours out of those shareholders because if we don't see that, then my stakeholders actually can become disengaged yeah, yeah. And, and disconnected from the business. So a, a, a shareholder shareholder who's behaving in, not, in a not aligned manner can have a significant effect on sta- stakeholders. And so if, you, if, you, if you've got a shareholder or a principal who's out there, even in the marketplace, and the customer has a crap experience, I mean, the brand damage is, is, is compounded uh, you know, quite a lot by the fact that you know, they're a shareholder. Mm-hmm. That's even worse. So, so I, I gotta, I'd say that anyone who's a shareholder of the business, their, their behaviours are so much uh, more under the spotlight than anyone else's. You know, it's a really interesting um, part. I always think that, you know, people get into business ownership for a couple of different reasons. Uh, the first one is ego. Hey, Dean, did, did you know I'm a director? Did you, did you see where I parked? Uh, sometimes uh, they might get into a business because of legacy. I really want something to pass down to my kids. Uh, sometimes they're investing money and they're actually looking for a very specific return. You know, so, hey, I'm going to give 100 grand. Can I have 10% back in my return? And the next one after that, sometimes they're actually doing it for control. You know, so, Dean, I actually need to be in control of this business. I, uh, you know, 
it, with full reference, I actually think I can do it better. You know, so I actually want to get out and run it. So you start, you've got to start to run around. It's actually okay for people to invest and just want a return. Like, you know, and we all need that at different points. It's got venture capital, right, in, in a lot of these businesses. Well, you know, obviously for some, a lot of businesses to, to actually expand and grow, uh, it needs that, right? So to actually be, be part of that, and if you can see that the business is actually performing well, then that, that's a really... But I often find there's a lot more emotional t- attachment to it, right? Um, you know, the, the thing is, though, is, is that, you know, if you, if you went and you bought 1% of BHP... You know, expecting to go in there and and um, tell BHP how to run their business is probably an unfair expectation, right? So, mm-hmm. so you know, you got to understand what what are you in it for. So, if you're a minority partner or a shareholder in a business, or even even someone with fifteen or twenty percent, you know, like you know, if your swim lane is listing and selling real estate, sure, give all the feedback in those areas that perhaps you know you can. But in terms of running a business, if someone actually in there knows how to run a business, you, or they've got experts who know how to run marketing, or you sort of got to let them do their job, right? Because otherwise, all you're doing is hamstringing the business. Right. So, you know, so having contribution and input is really important. But I think that contribution and input is how to influence culture, how to influence the rest of the team's behaviours, how do you help the team get to a higher level of standards and higher performance. And I think if shareholders do that in their swim lane, then they actually make an awesome contribution, which in turn gives them a higher a return on their investment and helps the business grow. So it's sort of learning how to play a role which is um, interdependent of each other. If mm-hmm. that makes sense, so what are you bringing to the table to how do you help the business grow? I, I, I think the trick is how do you balance and the needs of both both a stakeholder and a shareholder, and especially when they're both right. Because mm-hmm. if you if you think about it, you know, um, a, a, a st- if, if 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 the stakeholder um, is un- if a stakeholder is unhappy, whether it be employees or customers or whatever, and you know, that can actually affect the financial performance for the shareholder, mm-hmm. right? But if you're making decisions for the, sh- at, at the shareholders, for the shareholder's benefit at the effect of a stakeholder, a customer mm-hmm. or an employee, mm-hmm. then, then you, can, you can actually also have a negative impact, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so it's a balance. Which is what, what you see a lot of people do when they buy a company and they strip out all the assets, right? Like the Dick Smith type stuff. When the venture capitalists go in, they're just doing stuff to actually make a huge profit for the shareholders. The shareholders, yeah. But it's not a, for the ongoing success of the business. Yeah, and then all of a sudden the reputation of the business goes down, you, you lose trust, you lose relationships, and all of those things happen. So getting the balance right between balancing the need of a shareholder and the stakeholder, and sometimes you've got to make a decision for the customer that doesn't actually benefit in the short term the shareholder, but but in the long term interests of the business you have to make that call right. So so learning how to thread the needle across both of those is actually quite crucial. And and there's a lot of people who become shareholders in our industry that have low levels of business acumen mm-hmm. and highly emotional states of being, mm-hmm. and will come in and create all sorts of issues um, because they're actually not understanding perhaps a bigger. Uh, business decision for something, mm-hmm. um, or or maybe they don't like someone in particular, right? Mm-hmm. They don't like that individual, but that actual individual is, a, is an awesome performer. But because mm-hmm. they don't like them, they want the business to get rid of them. Mm-hmm. Well, you can't just do that, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and oh, we'll make the role redundant. Well, no, no, we, we're not going to make the role. You know, or, or if this person le- the, the 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 risk to the business of this person leaving because of X, Y, Z is quite substantial. And then how do you replace that? Just because you've got a personal dislike, so th- what, th- there's a lot of education that can go at least go on for a shareholder about how to play an active, responsible shareholder role mm-hmm. um, that balances off, off often about stakeholders. So I find it quite interesting. Yeah, um, and if you're seriously good, you actually engage your your um, your stakeholders in a very different way. Because like guys, hey, you're really important to this. Yeah. This is where we want to go. This is the line. Yeah. And so you know, one of the key things that, that I get with you guys is I've got this unbelievable Dijon slide deck, and it's got a whole range of things that actually talks about the values of the business and the numbers and the key things. That we need to be aware of, as well as technology and initiatives mm. and all of those things, so that we make sure that we're in pure alignment. And that's yeah. a fantastic outcome because it makes it a lot easier for me to be able to make sure that I'm walking in and talking about the right tech stack or the right initiatives that you guys have got going on, as opposed to other things that I might well, know it's in important market. For shareholders to be aligned on that too, and sometimes they they, they are, and sometimes they're not. But, but getting get, making sure they're all across that before the wider business, right? So then you've got you want because you want your shareholders to lead any of those initiatives through or, or mm-hmm. whatever it might be. So that's exactly right. The key is how to get alignment. And when things are out of alignment, then you're dealing with a messy uh, business.